Hello, Fight Insight fans, viewers, and listeners of the Filipino podcasting machine, Prince D. And with me, as always, the man formerly known as Timbo Slice Timbo B. Before we start, please take a moment to follow and subscribe to us on YouTube or wherever you get your star your pods and leave five star reviews. If you'd like to support the show, check out middaysquares.com and use code FIGHTINSIGHT15 to save 15% on your first order. On today's episode, we talk to a young fighter making good in and outside of the ring, discuss Paul vs. Woodley, too. Cruz versus DC, make our picks for UFC Lewis versus Ducas, and a whole lot more. Tim, hit it! Our guest today is here for two reasons. First, she's a professional mixed martial artist who has competed for Invicta FC and most recently for Triller's Triad Combat where she scored a 46-second knockout, earning her the 50K Fight of the Night bonus. But secondly, and equally as important, she's a philanthropist who has a passion and purpose outside the cage that we really think deserves our undivided attention. Joining us today from Kansas City, Missouri, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast, Alexa! Yeah. Right? <laughs> How you doing, Alexa? I'm doing great. I'm super happy to be here. Thank you so much. Now, for the people that are watching this on YouTube, you are you are not like captured or anything like that. Like you're not in prison. Can you explain no. where you are right now? I am <laughs> I'm sitting outside Glory MMA and Fitness. I just got off of work with a family, a foster family that I'm working with. Kids are screaming inside, and so I'm in my car inside of a tornado watch. Yeah, talking to you yeah. guys. This is the kind of dedication we expect from all our guests, <laughs> Alexa. You know, we've had a few guests that said, "Look, there's a tornado. I got to get yeah. to safety," but hey, not Alexa. You need a real one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alexa. If we see if we see a cow start flying in the back of your screen and be like, "Wow, that's hard work and dedication," can we start crying now? If I see a cow flying in the background. My night will be made. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Alexa, um, you know, we said in the intro, and for people that don't know you, uh, you fought at Triller Triad Combat, which was the first one ever. Yeah. Right? It, yes. was in the tri- it was in the triangle ring. It was the day when it was MMA fighters versus boxers, modified rules. You go out there with a 46-second KO, how has that don't get to the fight of the night bonus yet but how how was that experience and how did that change your life Ooh, it was okay there's so much that that like so much growth that happened from just that fight week and then even like the in the back lead up to the fight and then the fight itself uh i don't know there was just so many small challenges i've never had to fight outside really of the state. I live in Missouri-ish and I fought in Kansas-ish and that's not the biggest transition. That's only a 45 minute drive home. So <laughs> yeah. flying to Texas and then figuring out a weight cut and then we didn't have a bathtub and it's Thanksgiving and there's nowhere open. It was crazy. I got stranded in Dallas because our Uber dropped us off and then mine and my boyfriend john's phone died so now we're in dallas and we can't even get an uber and it's thanksgiving so it was closed it was just a lot of staying present staying calm practice over and over and over and i didn't even realize how much benefit that was going to give me on fight night where i was already so excited to do something that for one hasn't been done before but especially something that i've never done before uh I get like a super big addiction to the adrenaline of doing something completely scary or completely new that I can't expect or like guess what's going to happen. No. Uh, But being able to be present and everything throughout the week really helped me be so focused in the back, which allowed me to just go in that, in, I almost said cage, but the ring, the triad. And just know that, hey, whatever was going to happen, I was going to be fully in control of my body. And I was going to start finding the outcome. 
It's crazy. How was the environment? Like, you know, you, you go, you see like Invicta crowds where you fought before, you see like smaller house shows, you see the UFC crowds. Then you get to like insane places like BKFC. Yeah. Where like just random strangers come up and attack you after your fight. How was the crowd at Triad? Because it looked pretty insane. Like it looked super energetic. Yeah, they were wild and I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Um, nice. They brought us out before we fought which at first i was like what are we doing because i was yeah. so focused you know yeah, and yeah, then yeah. once i got out there i actually it like hyped me up because there was some there was people that had already been there and they've been free gaming so they were extra wild <laughs> and they're like throwing things and whatever wow. and i was like okay this is this is interesting this is great i kind yeah. of vibe with that kind of crowd not whatever but like the energy i was yeah. with it um and I've been on shows, uh, here we have FAC, it's on yep. Fight Pass, and it gets held in like a, a huge hockey arena. And so I've been in bigger crowds that feel, you can like feel the energy. So going into that huge stadium, I knew I was excited, but the night of the fight, anything can feel bigger. And so when I got out there, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I want to look around. I don't know if I want to see how many people are here. And then I looked around and I was like, this is so cool. Wow. Like, there's so many people. And like, yeah. it, was, it was really interesting. Just the level of energy. If you let it, you can just like feel it inside your body. Yeah, that's amazing. It, and Alexa, it took you longer to get to the ring to fin it, it probably took you longer to get to the ring to finish the fight. Like, it, like literally, like you were like five minutes to get into the ring, go in there, forty second knockout, okay, back out. Like, whoa, okay, all right, I could probably yeah. pick up my dry cleaning and stuff faster than this, right? That's crazy. I know. I almost had a bunch of family like fly out. And <laughs> they were gonna like drop a bunch of money to get flights and then do like get into the arena and hotels and all this and i was like oh thank goodness you guys did not because i mean <laughs> they would have loved it but yeah also thanksgiving don't 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 drop your thanksgiving yeah and your no hey it's not every day that they get to see you in the inaugural event of a promotion i mean that was pretty crazy the whole thing it was so super cool <laughs> so i know you said you're outside glory mma which is where you train right is that yeah. has that and that's always been the gym you train at, Glory MMA? Like, that's your home gym? Yeah, I got super, super lucky. Yeah, that's Best crazy. Luck, whatever you want to call it. But I've been there since I was 15. Like, that's crazy, though, because uh, for those that don't know, Glory MMA is where James Krause trains out of. Uh, and he's the coach, and he's your coach. Yes, yeah, he's and, our head coach. And this dude is, like, a legend in MMA, man. Not Not only is he, like you know, a great fighter himself, but he's like a super cool guy, takes fights on short notice. He's a How psycho. has it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't say, don't say that. He'll never come on our podcast. We don't want to say oh that. My gosh. <laughs> I do have to ask you one thing about James Krause. Yeah. His nickname. The. The. Yeah. The. The, the, the James Krause. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? How? What does? How, what's the origin of that nickname? Do you know? Like, that's the funniest nickname that is just the. Or D, whatever. I don't, I honestly, nobody even questions it. No, it's just, hey, no. man, that's that's the dude. That's it's it's the James, James Krause. Krause. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess love it. whenever it got made, they knew whether yeah. he did it or somebody else. No, no, it's good. Um, so for those that don't know Alexa Culp, where, you know, where did you come from and what made you become... Uh, an MMA fighter. I we did have a fan question, and it came from at Dana Marie underscore Laureen. I don't know if you know. <laughs> I think you might know her, but she was saying, like, did you always want to become an MMA fighter? She's a mess. Okay, yeah, that's my mom. Oh, okay. Oh, that's Hello. nice. She's so cute. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes, I've always wanted to be an MMA fighter, probably since I was like eight, maybe younger. Dang, wow. Okay. Um, but it's because I grew up, if I were to paint a fast picture, my mom and my dad had me at pregnant at 19, had me at 20. We all grew up together. They, <laughs> again, I got super, so lucky that they were like, hey, we don't make the best team together. Let's kick ass. I don't know if I can say that on here, but yeah, yeah. And <laughs> they were like, um, 
let's do this as a team, but separate. And so since they were so young, they had their friend groups. And I basically got raised by a huge herd of young, strong, crazy people. Okay. Um, and so I had my mom's side and like all of her girlfriends and her like huge group. And then I would hang out with them and they just made me a super like, you don't take no shit kind of person <laughs> where like, they were like, Hey, females have to like step up and you have to work and it's going to be like, it'll be okay, but don't stop working. Like you have to step up for yourself. And then I would go to my dad's house and like my mom's house was all super girly and it was like, do your hair and do your nails. And, Oh, you look so cute in this dress and everything. And I loved it. And then I would go to my dad's house and all of his friends, like all of my uncles, um, they would basically say the same thing of they'd be like, yeah, you work hard. You should be confident about that. You work hard. Don't let what, anyone like doubt that and like prove nice. it, prove it, prove it. And they hyped me up every second. Like I, I could be, I was not good at throwing a football. I wasn't bad. Okay. But I, okay. I wasn't great. And they told me for years that I was better than any boy that could throw a football to the point to where I convinced my middle school teacher football coach that he wanted me on the team because <laughs> I threw better that I could throw better than any of the boys because they made me believe it so hard and so I yeah. would sit down and watch MMA with them when I'd go to my dad's house and they'd be like you could do that and we'd wrestle around and everything and they hyped me up every second I'm so so freaking lucky for that and so when I found my mom caved and she took me to glory and then I just didn't leave and I walked in there and I was like, hey, my uncles said I am better than all the boys. And I'm, <laughs> and then my mom told me that as long as I work hard, it'll be true. And that is, I seriously couldn't well, get myself to leave. <laughs> well, that's and amazing. At least you, you have like a strong family network, people that are really supportive about what you're doing. And, you know, it, that's, you know, sometimes usually you have family members that say, no, you know what? I don't think you should get into it. It's too violent. I don't think yeah. that's a sport for you. But look at this. Like, they amp you up. And look at you now, man. 46-second knockout. What? What? It's crazy. Yeah. Alexa, um, you compete, you're competing for Invicta. And, like, you're still under contract with them now, right? Yes. Yes. So... So it's funny because we had a lawyer on our podcast who does like fight lawyer stuff. And his name's Daniel Martinez out of Miami. Awesome yep. dude. You should follow him. Okay. Everybody should follow him. He's a great guy. He was talking to us about like for amateur fighters or young professionals when they sign contracts. He said the one thing that you got to be careful about is when you sign a contract and it prevents you from fighting for other organizations. Yeah. So how is it that you got to fight at at uh, Triller? Um. Shannon Knapp does open contracts, uh, and ah. I have a great fight manager Ooh. who worked it out, and it has saved so many females' careers just because she is constantly trying to like make the best move, and so there are times where things kind of get slow, and she yeah. wants us to have. Uh, I mean, they get slow whether anybody wants them to or not, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, she has always been super firm about she wants us to be able to have our career and she wants like our career to be the first priority uh, and That's so she's amazing. not going to really keep anybody like she's not going to lock anybody down so That's crazy. Like, few girls in Invicta that have especially during quarantine and all that that were able to find local shows and keep everything going That's amazing. Wow. That's really cool it's, because you yeah. know what and that like kudos to her too because now you going out there and elevating your name and your yeah. brand now when you come back to invicta they're like yo this is the triller girl right yeah. like this is the 46 second ko girl so oh, girl. Nah, that's awesome are you that said then uh are you looking to do invicta next or another triad combat or just whatever shows up oh <laughs> nah, i mean if you finish people in 46 seconds, you could do it in the same night. Like, don't don't limit yourself. Right. I mean, we're here to do the crazy things. So, yeah. who knows? I know in, um, there's supposed to be an Invicta card January 12th. I know I've already talked to my manager about that. So Nice, nice. If it's supposed to happen, it will. And then um, there's talk about another triad card coming up. 
And I, do you think they'll always do MMA versus boxing? Do you think that will be their uh, shtick? I think it would be cool. And I think I could see it happening for at least like a few more times. And if they can figure out how to keep it going, that would be that would be very interesting. But if you just keep doing it, then all the boxers start training MMA and everyone's just going to start training the other thing. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. everyone's just going to become a blended fighter, which would only improve everyone's game. We should all be yeah. doing that anyways. But um, I don't know if it could stick to MMA versus boxing because everybody would just be like, well, I'm just going to do what you do anyways. And <laughs> but, but Alexa, can you make a promise? If you have family coming over to watch the fight, can you make it last at least the first round? Just because I, I, you know, like you got to at least l let it create a little bit of drama. Like pretend like, you know, you get hurt and you're like, oh, I can't. You know what I mean? Like she, she touched me once. Uh, all right. Well, very Where? generous of you to say, Alexa, very generous. Uh, after the fight. So I want to get to the performance of the night. So after the fight, you you find out that you get the fight of the night and you get the 50 g's mm -hmm. and there's a video you posted it it's on it's on your instagram i think and other people were sharing it but you get the phone call the 50 g's and then that was the owner and then he doubles it yeah <laughs> that's emotional yes like that's crazy now so it went from 50 g's to a hundred oh and the re <laughs> <laughs> and the reason though is, and this is where I want to segue, the reason is, is because he's heard of the good work that you're doing and what you had intended to do with some of your money, right? Yes. Yeah. He asked me uh, what the plan was with the 50 and I had been talking to my family and um, about wanting to start a foundation. It's something I've wanted to do forever, knowing that something needs to be done. Uh, so I want to start my own foundation and start locally. I mean, if we can grow big, I got big plans always, but I want to start a local foundation for foster kids and start oh, nice. uh, creating support systems because they're needed and there's a lot of holes. So there's a lot of support that's needed and a lot of support that's not given, or if it is given, nobody is going out of their way to tell the foster kids or foster parents that it's there, which is crazy. But... That's how it is. So I'm trying, the plan is to become a huge voice so that the support's there and every single person knows about it. That's amazing. Wow. Prince and I talk often about goats, right? Yes. And, and, and we talk about greatest of all time. And we, you know, we're on Filipino TV across Canada and we've had that conversation on, on their sports weekly program and stuff. One of the things that I always say matters to me when I when I say who a goat is, it's what they do outside of the ring or what they do outside of the cage. It's people like Dustin Poirier or Justin yep. Wren or those people that are doing things good for the public. That's you. Like, mm. like you know what I mean? Like, that's Bye. you developing that now and thinking about that. How, like, how did you get involved in that? Like, what is your, like, how did you find that passion? I have had um, kind of like a very personal connection with the foster care system through my family forever. Okay. Um, one of my cousins uh, ended up in a group home very early and would go back and forth from staying at his house and then having to stay at a group home. And eventually was it looked to be very permanent in the group home. And we got it to where he was able to spend visits at my mom's house. Uh, but everything was, I mean, unless, unless we went to fostering, he wasn't going to get out of the group home. And I used to go, uh, I'm trying to think when I was started driving. So when I was 16, when I started legally driving, when I, uh, when I was 16, I would drive up to the group home and he had been kicked out of all schools that he was allowed to attend. Uh, so they were doing school in the group home and they were not. So he was just sitting there doing nothing. Yeah. I would wow. print off math sheets and reading sheets and oh my God. go up there before I had two hours before I needed to be at the gym after school. And I would go up there and we would throw a football and practice math problems and reading and vocabulary. Eventually, I created 
so much like fuss and my mom's heart is so big that it was kind of like, damn, he needs a, like a permanent place. And yeah. so she started fostering him, which brought awareness to his younger brother, which we already knew, but the courts, they're two different cases and all this big thing. And it, this is years. Like this is mm. so, it's, yeah, yeah. I was so angry about it for so long that I was like, how is nobody stepping up for him? Like how mm. is it just us? that care about him and the other kids that are in here. Like I walk in here during school hours and there's still 40 kids sitting around doing literally nothing yeah. at all. If like, it's crazy. And so he moved in and then eventually we were able to get his younger brother. And we actually, um, they've been, my mom's house, they've been living in, I kind of lost track of the years, but they have started visits with their mom again and that's been great nice. so i do want to put that out there because it deserves to be in the universe because she's been stepping up awesome which is huge but it's taken forever because the holes in the system and i think yeah. i just went on a rant so i don't know if i answered the question no 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 you going off on a rant shows your passion you know what i mean like you, you can yeah. only go on rants when you're passionate about something and i think Fair. people hear it the reason why we wanted to have you on, Alexa, aside from your win and all that, is when I saw your story, and I admittedly, I didn't know your story until I was looking up, who's this girl that got 46 second KO? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then on your Instagram, it said, passionate about foster children, hit me up for info, right? Yes. And I was like, I was yes. like, why would this person be into this? And then I started doing the research and I started seeing, and we thought, Prince and I thought, hey, we're mm -hmm. in the Christmas season, it's December. A lot of people are looking for good news stories, like things to be happy about. Yeah. New Year's is coming up. People want to do like New Year's resolutions. People need to get involved with with causes like yours, you yes. know. And so the minute you have your foundation set up, yes. please do let us know so that we can share okay. it with people, right? Because we want people to, to get involved. But if you had to tell people now, like, and, and maybe it's foster children, maybe it's a different cause, but if you had to say like, what's a word of advice that you would give for people if you say, hey, if you want to help and you want to, you know, assist or donate time or do whatever, what would you say is something that they should do or, or how should they go about it? Yeah, especially sticking with the foster uh, yeah. care. Uh, I wouldn't really say system because that's the part I don't like, but everywhere um a lot a lot of times they're kind of hidden no one talks about them again but there's a lot of foster organizations and foundations that are kind of hiding and if you okay. start to dig on the internet and you look in your local area there's usually some sort of program that they run you can volunteer um i started working i got like it wasn't even volunteer work i was uh, started working with the family I'm working now um, through one of our organizations in Kansas City, Missouri is called Foster Adopt Connect, and they provide personal behavioral assistance and behavioral interventionalists. And we go work in home with parents and kids and help transitions happen and help the kids learn how to self-regulate and help the parents learn new language um, and kind of you get to be a part of the whole team and you kind of get to be hands on. And there's a lot of programs starting to pop up like that, nice. uh, that you can start looking into and signing up for. They give you training. Like it's, it's not as long as you show up and you're able to just stay patient and calm in high intense sensual situations. That's all you need. Just listen yeah. and shh your mouth and we're good. And the kids <laughs> will calm down and they'll tell you exactly what they need. That's, that's it. Active but, listening, active listening, active listening. That's yes. it, Alexa. Right. Yes. So that's the most yes. important part. No, but you know, I just sorry to interrupt you there, Alexa. But I just wanted to say, like, it, it, there's a lot of it, there's so many gaps. Not even only in Kansas City, but also Kansas City, Missouri, but also in uh, um, in in Canada as well too. There's so many gaps, and uh, my man, the, my pet peeve is waiting lists. I don't know if you guys have it on your end as well. <laughs> right there you go. Waiting lists, just waiting to get services, waiting to get counseling, waiting to get supports. And you know, it's like, how do you break that barrier? Who do I have to talk to, to get this family or this, 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 this person, this student supports, yeah. right? 
Mm-hmm. And so how do I bridge that gap? And who do I have to, who do we bring the people together to, to help support a family? But Alexa, you're doing something about it. And my hat goes off to you. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I see on your Instagram, you'll share things like, you know, little informational things about how to help and things like that. So I think it's really important. Like one that you had, I, I think it was either today or yesterday. Um, you had something saying, you know, that foster children carry their belongings in garbage bags. Mm -hmm. So like if you have luggage and stuff, donate like your old suitcases and stuff. Screw that, Alexa. If you're listening to this podcast, go buy some luggage and donate it. Right. Like and here's another and here's another thing I'll say, Alexa, I don't know if you'll get mad at me about this. But when I, I when I did some charity work before, I realized that if you give money, sometimes a lot of that money kind of gets filtered away and not much gets to the end person you want so like for me i was passionate about like animals and cats and things like that and i found out that it's a lot better to buy food yes and bring it to the to the um to the what do you call it like the The adoption agency or whatever the shelters and things like that bring the food because then you know you're 100 that food is going to the animals so you know things like that like if you can help out with foster children whatever find things find things that they need and bring those things over right yeah, and or, that's what I was or donate your time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's what I was gonna say is that along with a lot of those organizations, they're starting to create a lot of um, little shops. Obviously, yeah. you don't have to pay anything, but if you go donate clothes and toys and strollers and diapers, oh my gosh, yeah. small things. Go donate a toothbrush. Yeah. Yeah. Start small guys. It is, it is new years. You're making new year's resolutions. You know, you're not going to get in shape. You know, you're not going to get any, any better looking donate some stuff, right? Like help the, help the people that are needy, make it, make a, make a a new year's resolution that you know, you can actually keep, you know what I mean? And, and help some people along the line, follow Alexa's lead. Um, Alexa, before we let you go and thank you so much. uh, I have a, poster here that someone put made for you and i think you might like this oh goodness this is from that must uh be sick. mma yeah our friends over at at mma social squad they made this for you they said we couldn't find a a nickname for alexa so they've titled you miss 46 seconds alexa cult <laughs> or the knockout philanthropist alexa cult oh shoot <laughs> i like that i like that uh, the question for you is why no nickname yet for Alexa Culp? It just hasn't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know because yeah. I'm just me. I'm nothing like there's, there's nothing crazy going on. This is, I don't know. I'm the same me in the cage, just a little bit extra violent, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hopefully. Well, but, hey, if you take the knockout, if you take the knockout philanthropist, Alexa Culp. That's pretty good. I, I do like it. That one's actually is pretty cool. I like it. I like it. Make sure you give these guys a shout out when you use that. And I will send you this photo too so that you okay, have it because it's a really cool it's a really cool picture they make. Um, last question is from uh, at Aiden911. What's the end goal for Alexa Culp? What would you like to end up doing with your life? After MMA? Uh, I don't know. Is it is it like to just really have a successful MMA career? Is it UFC? Is it one FC? Like what is? Um, I want to take MMA in whatever direction I can. Uh, I am using it as to build as big of a platform as I can to spread the word about the foster care system. Uh, after that, I, <laughs> I want to have a, as much land as I can manage. Um, okay. And I want to pull foster kids in nice. and teach them how to farm and how to create uh, kind of like real skills that they can go use. I want to pull in uh, older kids and obviously some okay. younger kids, but a lot of older kids need to know that they can that they can work hard, that they're capable, and that mm-hmm. um, there is a little bit of expectation for them to add to society, and that they don't. Uh, that they don't need to just be a blob because that's all they've kind of been shown how to do because yeah. no one no one really pays attention to them because they go, oh, you're just going to age out and you'll ride the system to wherever it takes you, uh, which is 80% of it goes into prisons. Uh, yeah. And there's actually a study that I don't know, I can't say for everywhere, but um, in the Midwest, 
uh, they base a lot of prison designs off of how many kids are going into the system. Oh, wow. So, yeah, because they know. Crazy. They know. And they're not doing anything about it. Wow. Yeah. Alexa, well, I, I just got, I'm sorry. Go no, no, go, go. Tim, I was, I mean, uh, Alexa, I was going to say, I mean, all the things that you've been saying, it's, you know what, it, it's so motiv motivationally, like you're motivating a lot of people out there, uh, getting everybody involved. And part of it also is some of the things that you're seeing right now, it's, it's developing, I, I like using this word resiliency, resiliency, okay. resiliency, resiliency. And I know that's one of the things that you probably promote what you're doing at home, especially the intensive support, the home care as well. Um, but uh, you know, the R words, definitely one of the things that we need to get out there, right? Especially when you're fighting as well, too, you're in the cage, you're overcoming obstacles, overcoming uh, those yeah. barriers right and so you're you know you're showing these showing people out there look look what i'm doing right now right and so i uh yeah my hat goes off to you alex i really hope you know what you become successful and people see what you're doing out there it's just amazing amazing stuff yeah Thank you alexa, so much. alexa you have an amazing story you can we can see the passion i mean we can it's hard to see you but we can feel the passion <laughs> we can feel the passion it's there and you are going to have an amazing journey. You're going to have an amazing life. I'm so proud uh, of the work that you're doing in Foundation. Again, the minute you have stuff set up and the minute you're going, please let us know. We'd also love to have you back on the podcast. Yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. Before we let you go, is there anything that you wanted to say or um, anybody that you wanted to shout out? Nah, always. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My mom already got her shout out. Yeah. Mom got She's it. She's so sneaky. Um, <laughs> She's very quick with the fan question. Oh my gosh. She knows. She's yeah. so silly. Um, okay, so obviously my whole gym, I wish I could go through all of the savages. But nice. uh, John O'Brien, who's actually my boyfriend, uh, was flew out to Texas with me. Uh, this He's only been on a plane one other time. And it was when I stole him and took him to Mexico. And so... <laughs> It was, he overcame some anxiety with that. So I'm very appreciative. And then I've got awesome. Isaac Dolgarian uh, and then Alan Olivas who have been training pretty like next to me and kind of hyping me up inside the gym uh, for years. And nice. one day if, if I come back on, remind me to tell you about the story uh, <laughs> when I asked Isaac to be my training partner for the first time and he tried so hard to reject me. All right. Okay, that is the story we are going to do with you next time for sure. Alexa, we will put all your uh, links to social media in the show notes. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, we'll put it on there as well. But guys, go follow Alexa Culp. Get on the train now. Alexa, in a few years, I am going to be saying that you are the greatest of all time oh for gosh for what you're doing in the cage, but for especially for what you're doing outside. So thank you for everything. Thank you for spreading like a positive message. We really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for spending so much time. I know we kept you a little bit long. I'm glad you didn't blow okay. away. So yeah. uh, the car moved earlier and I was like, don't freak. Yeah. <laughs> Alexa, I'm, I'm not gonna, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Cause I did see the car tilt a little bit. I'm like, oh my gosh, please. And I was like, what if this podcast sees me roll? But we're good. We would have got so many views, Alexa. So that's all right. N thank you, Alexa, for coming on. We really appreciate it. Have a wonderful thank day and uh, good luck with everything. Take thank care, you. Alexa. Thank all right. Happy Bye. holidays. Happy yeah. holidays. All right. Man, I am so happy that we got to speak to Alexa. Yeah, she is so cool, man. I really hope that, you know, she gets her, you know, her charity and foster yeah, care that yeah. she has in mind going just because man it's not a lot of people doing what she's doing a lot of people now are just you know so focused on okay making money yeah. you know causing buzz and all this right yeah. and so you know alexa's you know she's kicking it up a notch right and um yeah mental health children's mental health it's a big deal right so yeah no of course that's what you do man you know yeah. i do want to say thank you to alexa too because guys Again, if you're not watching it on YouTube and you're just listening, she was literally in her car and it's like dark and there's like a tornado. When we saw her come on, we we're like, hey, are you OK? Like, mm -hmm. okay, but she, she wanted to do it. And we really appreciate it so much, man. Um, if you are watching, I hope it's not too dark, but it doesn't matter. It's the message that she's saying. And I think it's that positivity. And we really want to get that out, Prince, for like for Christmas time, man. 
Yeah, and and Alexa, she said it's the best, and you could tell too in her voice, like how passionate about uh, about the situation she is, right? Yeah. And, yep. I mean, explain the whole thing and the gaps, and she, it's almost like she's ready yep. to punch somebody in the face. She's like, Ugh, like yeah. look at this nonsense, I'm right? I'm telling you, man. Like when I again, I don't want to get too crazy. I don't want to prevent people from donating money, of course, but. I don't know. In my own personal experiences in history, I realized that like donating your time yep. or spending the money on the items and then bringing them, you know, like I, mm-hmm. man, her, that post that she had on her Instagram that said that foster children carry their stuff around in garbage bags. So yep. please donate your old. And, and the post said, please clean up and donate your old suitcases rather than throw them out. No, man, go buy some freaking suitcases and donate. Yeah. Like, it, like if you have the heart to clean up your stuff and donate it, that's mm-hmm. wonderful if that's all you can do. But if you at all have that in your heart, go purchase it. You know what I mean? Like skip one McDonald's and go and buy something, you know, for the, for the kids. Um, I just watched the YouTube, or was it Fight Pass or YouTube? Bobby Green, they did like a documentary about his life. You know, Bobby mm-hmm. Green is like yeah. my favorite. Um, he, uh, he, documented his life and like he was like going into the foster system and, and all the stuff that he went through man that i mean geez louise it's motivational um heart-wrenching but motivational um and i did forget prince i totally forgot i can't believe i forgot this but i but sam alvey reached out oh my god i can't believe i screwed this up sam alvey <laughs> reached out and wanted to say to alexa cult um that she's doing god's work thank you so much and uh if she needed anything to reach out to him so i'm going to reach out to her after this and i'm going to i'm going to pass that along i can't believe i forgot to do that but tim just call her back up just call her back up hey right Alexa, yeah. just wait. like Dude, hey I, i'm telling you i do get very nervous during these interviews that that is my uh new year's resolution for myself for this podcast i really want to try and get less stressed when i'm doing the interviews sometimes i watch these back and i'm like why did you like forget to say this or whatever so but you know what i mean like again going back to alexa alexa you are the best you're amazing i yeah. oh man i just wish like you know she was around I wish she was around toronto because i mean we could have you know done a collaboration yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And done all yep. that and oh man that but, that yeah. said if you want to help support the show, go to middaysquares.com, use code FIGHTINSIGHT15, get some of these amazing functional chocolate bars. It will help support the show. And I'm telling you, man, Prince, I've said this to you before. The minute this podcast starts making money, we are sponsoring fighters and we are giving back to the MMA community. We're sponsoring fighters, 100%. You know, we're going to, whatever we can, we're going to do that and sponsor fighters and things like donate to Alexa Culp's um, foundation. And yeah, I guarantee you, you know. Prince, I guarantee you, I don't know how much, but the minute she has the foundation, I'm sending her something. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like to help no. out and to, you know, to, to start it up. Um, yeah. yeah. Next you, know, week, you know how I feel about ch- children's mental health and all yeah, that, man, right? Of so. course. All right. Next week on the podcast, we have a guest, but our show is not going to be about the guest. Our Next week's show is going to be our Christmas show and our year-end show. So we're doing our year-end awards. So next week we're doing male fight of the year, female fight of the year, uh, breakout star of the year, fight of the night, uh, fight of the year, submission of the year, knockout of the year. We've been posting on our Instagram stories every now and then. We'll post one category and we're getting your votes and we're getting some stuff. We've got the nominees pretty much down pat unless someone, you know, gets a ton of votes. Um, But we're going to do the, the, end of year show next week and dr jimmy stavros is coming back and he's going to help us um make our picks make our picks for the winner dr J. he will be back so we're very excited about that all right prince we went long with alexa i really appreciate that let's get to a couple of things what do you want to talk about first you want to talk about woodley paul we talked about it last week (laughs) <laughs> so t- tim we we, we I mean, talk it's about still happening we, tim we talk about really serious we had a, like a really serious conversation topic and yeah. now we're talking paul versus woodley well uh jake paul is donating money to woodley's charity as in like donating money to woodley so <laughs> i thought you were serious i thought, no. I thought, that, I thought that was what i'm like oh really oh, that's like, okay woodley's no charity <laughs> Uh, all right. Nothing really much has happened since last week, but since this fight is this coming Saturday, uh, again, final predictions, Prince. Listen, uh, uh, it's going to be Paul, Paul decision. That's what's going to happen. 
I'm gonna say Paul. Paul I'm gonna say Paul knockout. Paul knockout. Paul knockout in the sixth round. I'm assuming this is a ten round fight as it was last time. So I'm gonna say sixth round knockout. Paul. I don't see it going the distance, man. I, I think he gets it done this time. Well, Woodley's gonna have to sell it really, really well. No, man, this is real he's gonna, shit. He's be like, oh god, knock him out. My, my tattoos come off. Prince DC versus Dominic Cruz. Oh. Okay, you know, hold on. I'm gonna for people that don't know what happened, I, I due to time, I'm not gonna play both clips. But essentially, Dominic Cruz was at a fighter interview because he was fighting on Saturday. Mm-hmm. He's at the press conference, they're asking him, and he makes a comment about the commentary team and says, I really like what John Anik does uh for a DC. I normally mute him. Uh, he doesn't. It, well, essentially, he kind of says that DC doesn't really do his homework on the fights, doesn't really uh, watch mm-hmm. tape, and he kind of says it in and amongst a whole bunch of things. He does say he loves DC and all that, but of course, those clips start going crazy. And then I'm going to play a short cl- clip here because then DC immediately, I think, like on the Wednesday or the Thursday before the fight Saturday, mm-hmm. has him on a little segment on his YouTube, and here's a clip of them kind of going at it. Okay, so I've given you the context here. Opinions and honestly. Can I say something? Please. Can I tell you something right now as an honest, as a friend? Please. It was wrong of you to say what you said this morning. Oh, so I'm wrong. Because that was not fair of you as a colleague to do that publicly. You to tell do, me. To do, well, just what like did, you tell what me. What did I do? Going though? up there, because the reality is, what even did if I you do? said, Dominic, even if you said, DC's my brother, right? You and I, brother. All right. I'm going to stop it there. It goes on and on. You got to go watch this if you haven't seen this. <sighs> Prince, I, we have not talked about this. What is your opinion on this? Whose side are you on here? Okay, listen. Everyone knows who Dom is. That's the way he is. He has no filter, right? If you ask him a question, he'll give you an honest answer, right? And he said what was on his mind, okay. right? He's a grown man. You know, he 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 says that is what it is, right? He just goes in there. He he, you know, for him, it's just he's telling the truth, and everyone's like, oh, so shocked about him. Like, well, that's that's dumb for you. Right. And I mean, that's how he feels about the situation. And maybe, I don't know, we don't know what's, what's going on behind the scenes. Maybe DC was roasting, uh, roasting him as well too. And, uh, we don't know the full context of how the relationship is yep. behind the scenes. Right. So for me, you know, Dom was asked a, a question and he gave an honest answer and that's it. That's, that's how I feel. I'm, and, and the, no, that's, that's honestly, right. I think I'm, I'm with, I, you know what? That's that's Dom with Dom. Like, I mean, that's you know what we're gonna have to filter him now. Now he's gonna have to be there and be like, "Oh, this is amazing." No. So I am on your side. I'm on Dominic Cruz's side on this. I think the internet was a buzz with DC support. I think everybody was supporting DC that I could see. They said Dom was inappropriate and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. I get he's inappropriate. Mm-hmm. I get all that. I get that maybe it's not the best thing to say. Like, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all, right? He didn't have to go to that length for sure. Mm-hmm. But the fact that he did say it and then that DC, you know, confronts him like this during his fight week. Yeah. Like, dude, you don't, even if you're upset with him, let him go for his fight. Thank God he wins and he freaking did amazing. Mm-hmm. But like, why would you then as a peer who's getting mad at him for being rude to you as a colleague and a peer. Why would you then Mm -hmm. sit him down and give him more stress on this? I mean, that interview could have gone really badly were it not for Dominic's cool demeanor, right? Mm. Where he does not give an F. Yeah. Like that clip. I love it where he goes, Oh, so I'm wrong. Like, (laughs) you know, like he, I I love the way he argues. He reminds me a lot of myself. Yeah. yeah, Because he doesn't give you an inch. He just freaking stone cold walls cool. you right like i mean kudos to him for doing that but man i don't think dc was right to pull him into that because mm-hmm. that's very mm-hmm. selfish of you and i think what people forget is that dominic was being interviewed as a fighter not as a commentator yep. so he's saying hey as a fighter when i'm out there and if this commentator is not able to comment on my uh, commentate on my fight appropriately because he's not doing his job and stuff and that's the way i feel as a fighter Mm -hmm. hey man i think it's because he's also a commentator that then it became an issue but i feel like other fighters have probably said the same about people 
and say, hey, I don't like this commentator. I don't like this ref. I don't like whatever. But you don't get then pulled aside to do a separate interview with the person that is now accusing yeah. you, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like they kept, I mean, Bisping was saying, you know, it was, you know, professional courtesy. Like, you know, you don't yes, say anything, yes. keep it behind. But I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, Dom's 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 Dom. He's going to say what he wants to say. And, uh, and DC, you know, you're right. The thing is, is DC was like, you know, he's the type of guy who's like, whoa, you're calling me out. You're not just going to call me out and me stay quiet. I'm not just going to tweet about it. I'm going to, you know, pull you aside and we're going to pull you aside and film you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. That was interesting, man. I don't know what, uh, I don't know how to feel about that too much. But anyways, uh, I don't, I, what you think we'll ever hear any more of this? No, right? Well, like, you know what? We, we, go got, we got to thank the UFC for giving us a pre preliminary fight. That was like a like a <laughs> like that's what that's what that was just yeah. happened. You know what? Just to build up UFC two sixty nine and shout out to us for big to, for making the biggest prediction ever on the podcast. Who would have known? Who would have thought? Eh, Tim? UFC Who would have thought? Two- yeah, UFC two sixty nine recap for those that don't know that don't maybe you're new to us. You know, like Alexa Culp's mom is probably watching this podcast now. And uh, so if you're new to us, last week we predicted, you can find it on our podcast last week. You can look at our Instagram uh, post because we clipped it before it happened. (sighs) Juliana Pena, second round submission. We predicted it on Fight Insight podcast. We should have bet money. My wife is very mad that we did not. We would have made billions of dollars, Prince. What a crazy night, man. I mean, what a crazy night. That was, un- man, I, I just can't believe we've got proof that we called it. Yeah, no, it was beautiful. It gave us a lot of street cred, Prince. And, you now, know what? I just don't know why Pena hasn't like messaged us back yeah, about one of the comments. And, and, and we posted that thing, you know, supporting her like before the fight, too. But yeah. damn it, man. Uh, okay. Was the fight rigged? <sighs> Oh, let's get cool. let's get to the realness of it here, Prince. Was it rigged fight? A lot of people giving a lot of people saying the choke wasn't really in. Uh, she really seemed to you know take just a few shots and go down. So wait, so so people are doubting our our, our prediction? No, our well, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, well, was it a know, real was it a real fight? okay yeah okay so you know what there's been a lot of buzz people are saying okay amanda wasn't you know wasn't fighting you know the same as she was with fighting in any type of championship belt yeah. like she would be in there you know scrapping it out or she didn't even try and scramble out of that 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 choke or make an effort um yeah there was just something off tim i just looking back at it i'm like what's going on over here there's just something going on maybe i don't maybe you know they were building up a second fight for the for the second belt maybe amanda knew okay you know what i'm gonna win this but i kind of want some drama to build up to happen to you know a secondary belt you know rematch you know they're probably gonna shoot a lot of like training montages running up a hill carrying like massive logs I don't what know. do you think, Tim? I think it's real. I think Nunez may have panicked mm-hmm. when she started eating quite a few shots on the feet. Oof, Nunez yeah, had a beautiful uh, Pena had a beautiful takedown, mm-hmm. like very very nice takedown right into side control. Gets on, you know, Nunez turns uh, turns away, gives up her back. Juliana streaks in. I think maybe it wasn't even necessarily under the neck I, or under the chin. I think maybe it was even a face crank. Whatever mm-hmm. it was, I think it's real. And here's all, what else I'm going to say, Prince. For those that listen to the podcast, I always talk about gyms going on bad streaks and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Her wife lost her last fight after the pregnancy <sighs> lost to Mackenzie Dern. There's okay. that thing I talk about where yeah, like yeah. a gym or in this case, like a family starts to go on a little bit of a losing streak. Yeah. yeah. That connection. I'm just saying, so that kind of fits with my whole spiel there. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's real, man. I think that we predicted it beautifully. Yeah. I think that Pena did amazing. One thing I will say, and uh, I saw an interview with Pena saying, you better give me respect now. Yeah, yeah. And one of, one of the things that she said, which I loved, was you better put the spell my name properly with the N with the... <laughs> 
Iliquis? I, I forget how to say that word, but it's like the, the, the squiggly above the yeah. N. Yeah, yeah. And she was saying, there's a bunch of you, and I think she was talking to the media, you don't even spell my name right. Spell it right. Like, I love that, man. <laughs> I thought that was great. You know, and I, I do. When I when I post about her, I always hold on to my N. Yeah, yeah. To, the, to that one. And uh, yeah, I thought, that was, I thought that was great that she said that. I, I, I just, like her a lot. I like her. Yeah, I, you know what? I like the post in, uh, post fight interview when she goes, you know, like, so proud efforts, right yeah, at the yeah, very yeah. end, right? I was like, well, classic, classic. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to Juliana. Yeah, yeah amazing, it. man. All right, Prince. I knew this was going to happen um, when I asked you to, you know, say the intro for our podcast this weekend. We have UFC. Who is headlining the UFC, Prince? Say these names, baby. All right, Lewis and Duckus. <laughs> you I said got it, it even. Be- you said it better in the intro, though. I think you were like Duc- Dickus or Duckus? Duckus. 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 I think you said Duckus. Yeah. Duckus. Now, now in my head, I don't know how to say it anymore, so I'm going to skip it. Prince, uh, do we care about this card at all? Uh, this is an interesting card. I mean, it's coming off a very exciting last weekend. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this card is not the strongest in terms of the main event. Can you but, name but any but fights but that but Docus has had? Hey, you know what? But hey, I got to say this. I mean, the UFC fight nights have been, you know, they've been pretty exciting yes, lately, yes. right? Right. So who knows? Yeah. Um, I'm saying in terms of star power. Uh, it's it's a little bit light. Uh, Rocky's oh, fighting. Oh, Rocky's fighting. Rocky. Oh yes, hold on. Yes, that's right. On the prelims, Raquel Pennington, former guest mm-hmm. of the podcast, who should have been fighting former guest of the podcast, friend of the podcast, Raging Panda Julia mm-hmm. Avila. Uh, Raquel Pennington is fighting, and it's Macy Chieson. Um, who do you have winning that fight, Prince? Of course, Rock. Of course, Team Rocky. Rocky. Team Rocky. I'm very glad that we don't have to pick for her, between her and Julia. So we will be cheering for Rocky. Opening up the main card, you've got Cub Swanson versus Darren Elkins. Darren Damage Elkins. Mm-hmm. That's a very interesting fight. I like this fight probably more than any other fight on the card. Why is that? Who do you, who do you got on that? What? Why is that? Because it's Cub Swanson. Killer Cub Swanson. I love that I guy. And, yeah, I, uh, I, Darren Elkins is always insane. That guy will like be on the verge of death and mm-hmm, then come mm-hmm. back. Who do you have on that one? Cub versus I, I, Darren? Man, Elkins. I want I want Cub. I really want him to come and take this one. I know he's coming off of a uh, loss against Giga, and um, yeah, I know Elkins is yeah. coming off a two fight win streak, and so yeah, I got. I really want Cub to take this one. I do too. I love Cub. I want Cub to win. Um, you have a couple other fights. Okay, fine. Let's go to Angela Hill versus Amanda Lemos. Oh my gosh. Who do you got on that? Okay. Angela Hill, we know who that is. Yep, I, I'm going to Aman- stick with. I'm going to pick Amanda. Amanda. Amanda Lemos is on a four fight win streak. Um, has not fought, you know, the, the biggest named competition, but uh, mm-hmm. her last two fights she won by TKO in the first round, both. So yep. she's a girl that brings it. And then you've got um, Angela Hill, who, of course, we know who Angela Hill is because uh, Chris Curtis talked about her podcast on our podcast last week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I thought that was going to get a laugh out of you. She's she's lost three of her last four, Angela Hill. Yep. Prince, who are you picking on this? I, I got Amanda. Like, yeah. Hill has been on a downslide and... Um, you know, I've seen some of Amanda's fighters already. She's 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 kind of developing that Amanda Nunes kind of type of style, okay. you know, right? So I'm, yep. I'm going with Amanda. Okay. I will go with Amanda Limos. And the reason is, last fight when Angela Hill was fighting uh, Tisha Torres, yep. if you recall, I was very upset because during the pressers, um, Angela Hill made comments that Tisha was on steroids Uh, and she made a few comments that I felt were really inappropriate Mm -hmm. that she was saying that she was on steroids. Guess what I found out Prince? What? I was probably writing that stuff on some, uh, Instagram pages. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too rude, but I I remember writing on several pages saying Mm -hmm. that is super inappropriate for her to say that crap. She should Mm -hmm. be ashamed of herself. Why would you talk about that? Mm Hmm. She has blocked our account. 
that the sound of silence for our Spotify listeners, that's Prince's mouth dropping on the floor. Yes, Angela Hill has uh, <laughs> blocked the Fight Insight podcast because of my comments. I, I can only assume because what else would I have talked about Angela Hill about? Because I, I said that like it was so unprofessional that she should be ashamed of herself for, for um, accusing someone of being on steroids that you have no proof of just mm-hmm. for like a sound bite. I thought that was super unprofessional and I was not a fan. She mm-hmm. has blocked us. So Amanda Lemos, kick her ass. Let's do yep. it. But but you know what, Tim? You, you, you got to say, hey, you know what? That's To get that type of response from Angela Hill that, to block our account, that's kind of pretty right. big. Yeah, right? Pretty, that's, it's one of our greatest accomplishments of 2021. Yeah, we've got blocked, baby. That's it. <laughs> main, main, uh, co-main event is Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, who just re-signed with the UFC, yep. fights Bilal. Remember the name Mohammed Prince. Who do you got? Wonderboy Bilal. Uh, <laughs> I'm going for the Wonderboy, baby. Yeah, I want the oldest fighter alive title. I want him to take it. 39 years old. I want him to... I've, you know what? I've got a thing for all the UFC legends, and you know what? All right. He's I I, I really want to stick with Wonder Boy at this time. I man, I, I, right. it's really slim, but what do you think, Tim? Who you got? Oh, so tough. Uh, I will go with Bilal. I don't know. I'll go with Bilal. Bilal yeah, is, it's... Bilal's always angry. He's always upset about something. He <laughs> feels like someone's got it in for him. You know, he's always got a chip on his shoulder. And uh, I, I feel like he knows that a win over Wonder Boy is going to do wonders for his career. Mm-hmm. So I think he's I think he's got to take this fight. I, I don't think Bilal can afford to lose. Bilal is like on commentary desk and stuff like that. Like, I don't know how yeah. they pick this dude for commentary desk. Mm-hmm. So he's getting a push. I feel like this guy knows, hey, I got to make the most of my opportunities. I, I feel like he's going to go out and really take it to Wonder Boy. Main event is Derek Lewis. Derek Lewis. The Black Beast versus Chris Dawkins. Prince, who do you got? I got Chris on this one. Oh my goodness, are you insane? I I like I I I don't know. I I I like him. He's got knockout power. Yeah, he, he'll shock the world. Like five every five every heavyweight, straight. every heavyweight has knockout power. Yeah, but I mean, Chris, and I mean, look at him. Like a good majority of his fights have been all knockout straight, right? So, so he's tw- he's twelve. I think he's gonna. I think he's going to take this one. You're insane. 12 wins, three losses. 11 of his 12 wins are by knockout. So yes, of course, he's a big boy. He's got knockout power. But you are facing Derek Lewis, uh, who got totally screwed out of his championship fight and I lost know. to Cyril Gaon in his Gone. last fight. Gone. But he is you know, 25 and 8 with 20 knockouts. So this guy is no slouch. I got Derek Lewis all day on this. Yeah, you know what? Okay, I think the, I think the experience. I think you get Derek Lewis. Yeah, you know what? I I, I can see it now actually nope, in my no head. I can, oh god, never mind. I could just nope. see it like it's gonna be an up either. Okay, as you could heard it here first. It's gonna be second, maybe third. Sorry, third round uppercut. Bam. Oh, by who? I, I I'm just thinking Lewis is gonna do it. I think Lewis Stupid. is gonna do it. I guess I just feel like it's gonna happen, man. I just feel like yeah. this is gonna be the highlight reel. But yeah. all right. Prince, we are close to time. I do want to say friends of the podcast update. We've got the raging panda, Julia Avila. Like I said, she, um, you know, is not in her fight. She actually is going undergoing surgery today. So today is Wednesday, the 15th. I, I believe she's going under for surgery today. So we wish her all the best. That's the only friends of the podcast update I've got. We really do wish Julia Avila all the best and hope that she's uh, going to recover well, have a good New Year's, and then be back in the New Year fighting. Okay. Prince. And also, also yeah. wanted to give a special shout out to our sponsor, Hula Cleaning Services. Contact Hula Cleaning Service for all your carpet, fitness, commercial, to construction cleaning needs. You can find them at www.hulacleaning.com. Yes. And uh, Prince, always check out our Instagram stories because on Sunday we post the clean hit of the week presented mm-hmm. by Hula. These guys uh, are great people, great cleaning company. And uh, yeah, so they pick the clean hit of the week every week. Check out our Instagram story so you can watch that. Perfect. Prince, next week, end of the year award show. It's going to be Dr. Exciting. Jim. Dr. Jimmy. And we've got the fans voting on our Instagram stories as well. Guys, again, middaysquares.com. Check them out. Fight Insight, uh, Fight Insight 15 is the code. Prince, a huge thank you to Alexa Culp. 
And yes. uh, what else? Anything else you got to say before we go? Um, I think that's it. I think we've covered everything. Again, guys, YouTube, subscribe. Check out Follow some us on in Instagram, Spotify. Yeah. We've got more guests to come. The new year is going to be jam packed. We've got so many yeah, good, man. amazing guests coming through. Oh my God. It's going to be crazy so guests. Crazy. All right, guys. Crazy. Have a good one. See you, friends. Peace.